Hey fellow photographers, you know I just released a long video about how to calculate the optimal pinhole exposure. This is going to be a shorter video if you just want a quick reminder and see how I set up my photography field notes. So I got my meter here and I got my notes. So let me walk you through some of the notes I've taken for some of my cameras. So here's the 4x5 pinhole camera that I built. Here's another table for an Ilford Obscura 4x5 pinhole camera. This is how I organize my notes and this is how these tables work. First, we have to know the f-stop of the camera. Remember, the f-stop of the camera is just the focal length divided by the diameter of the pinhole. So 65 millimeters divided by 0.3 millimeters gives me 217. Then I make a table for all the films I use. Maybe you only use one film, maybe you use a couple films. It's good to write all the films that you plan on using down just in case. So I write down the films. In this case, I'm using Ilford films, 4x5 films, Delta 100, FP4, and HP5+. I write the ISO value of those films down just so I don't forget. It's pretty obvious with Delta 100, it's a 100 speed film. And these other two are 125 and 400 speed films. Then I have this factor, I denote it tau, you can use whatever letter you want. But I have a subscript of 128, which means that I'm going to set my meter, I'm going to read the meter for what it says for F128. And I have this factor, 2.86. How I get this factor? I take the f-stop of my camera, I divide it by 128, I square that number, and that gives me this. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my ISO value. If I'm using Delta 100, I set the ISO of the meter to 100. Take a meter reading. Tell me, see what shutter speed it gives me at 128. And then multiply it by this number. If that's over a second, which most likely it probably will be. I take the reciprocity factor and I apply that. So whatever I get by doing the meter reading at 128 times this number gives me my shutter speed. Take that whole thing, raise it to the power 1.26 in this case. Where do I get these numbers? Well, Ilford was nice enough to publish some stuff online. Again, you should do your own testing, but this is the technical information sheet for film reciprocity failure compensation. And it comes from this table right here. So I have my films Delta 100, uh, FP4, and HP5. So I take these numbers, copy them down in my book so I don't have to keep, carry this whole big sheet around. Similar thing with the Ilford Obscura camera, which is an F248. I still use that metering at 128. The films are the same, so I take 248 divided by 128, square it. That gives me a new number. This factor is unique to this camera. But remember, it doesn't matter what ISO you have, this is the factor. Take a meter reading, let's say I'm using HP5, set my meter to 400, take a meter reading, see what it says for shutter speed at one, F128, multiply it by this, apply this factor if I need to. So I'm gonna walk you through how to build a table real quick for an eight x 10 camera. So the eight x 10 camera that I have, that I built, is a eight x 10, 80 millimeter camera. Uh, so we have a focal length of 80 millimeters and a pinhole diameter of 0 0.3. So then I can bust out my calculator. Shout out to all my TI 89 titanium edition fans. So I take 80 divided by 0.3, 266.6666. So I'm going to leave that in the calculator for now, but I'm going to round it in here and just call this an F267 calculator. I'm going to keep this in here so I get exact results. All right, so where are we at? So now we have to put our films down. For my 8x10 camera, I use Delta 100, HP5, and sometimes I use 400 Tmax from Kodak. So we're going to talk about how to do this differently. We're gonna write down the ISO values. This is 100, this is 400, this one's 400. I'm gonna denote tau at 128. Again, you can choose any number you want here, right? But it depends on your, on your meter. So here's my meter, right? My meter goes up to F128, so I can use that. If your meter only goes up to 90 or 64, don't pick a number higher than that. Pick a whole F-stop that your meter works within. If you're using a digital camera, Pick something like F16, which most lenses can go to. So whatever meter you have is going to depend on what that number is. So now I need my factor that's going to apply to all three films, regardless of ISO, regardless of the film speed. So I still have my 266 stored in the calculator. Now I'm going to divide that by 128. Get a new number. I'm going to take that number, square it. That's my new factor. 4.340. So I'll just write 4.34 down here. That's my new factor. So real quick, as an example, 
set my ISO value to 100. Okay, I'm using Delta 100 in this example. I look through the scene, meter the scene, and turns out that the middle gray value, zone five, is at EV11, doesn't matter what it is. Now I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna look at my 128, and that's showing me eight seconds. I take that eight seconds, I'm gonna multiply that by this 4.34, that's my new shutter speed, 34.72 seconds. Now, depending on what film I'm using, well in this case I said we're using uh, Delta 100 because that's what we metered for. But again, we have those reciprocity factors. So we can just copy them from the other page. 1.26 for Delta. So if I was using Delta here, I would just take my answer, 34.72 seconds, raise that to the 1.26 power, boom, 87 seconds. That's my final shutter speed. And you can always err on the side of having more exposure because film has good latitude when it comes to overexposure. It's better to overexpose your film than underexpose your film. So it says 87 seconds. I'll probably just go 90 seconds just to be on the safe side, maybe even 100 seconds. So a minute and a half, minute 45, something like that, 105 seconds, something like that, just to make sure that I have proper exposure. And then when I go to test, if I find out I didn't have enough exposure, I'll add more. Or if uh, it's way too overexposed and everything is super blown out, then I will add less. So back to here, finishing our table, HP5, copy it over from the previous value, 1.35. That goes here, sorry, 1.31. Tmax is a little different. Here's the data sheet from Kodak for Tmax. It's like seven, eight pages long. On page three, we will see, page two, sorry. Lots of information in here. This is what they give. They don't give reciprocity factors for their charts. Here we have, uh, after you get to one, anything one second and below, no reciprocity co uh, correction needed. At 10 seconds, they say add a third a stop. At 100 seconds, they say add one and a half stops. Your final shutter speed ends up being 300 seconds. Well, we can't really add a third of a stop because it's a pinhole camera. It's got a set aperture, so that doesn't really apply to us. This we could write down, if it's 100 seconds, make it 300 seconds, but how often do we have a perfect 100 second exposure? So instead, I went online and read a bunch of forums and found this little handy dandy sheet, which I then printed out and put tape on it so that it's not gonna fold up and break. So this here looks to be a figure from a table for someone who has done the work. And essentially what this shows, uh, according to this person, again, we're gonna have to independently verify this, but here's the indicated time in the middle. And it's in third of a stops, but it starts at one, two, four, and they have third stop markings of where the dots are. So let's say I had an exposure, uh, a meter to time for Tmax at 30 seconds. I go to Tmax 400 right here, and I find out that I actually have to have an exposure of 49 seconds. So I can use this handy dandy chart. Um, again, this is not a substitute for independent verification, but it's a good start. You'll also notice that there are times for Delta and HP5, the other two films that I use. So maybe what I'll do is I'll do the calculation this way according to manufacturer. I'll do the little conversion here, looking at the indicated time and the adjusted time from this table, find out if they agree. If they don't agree, I'll probably make a judgment call, probably take the, the longer time, um, just to be sure that I have enough exposure, because remember, it's always better to overexpose than underexpose. So what I'm gonna do with this, for Tmax, I will say C table, and I'll probably just put this right in side the cover of the book. Like that, fold it in, close it up. Now I got my field notes. I can reference this table. And now I have a table for my four x five, my Ilford four x five, and my eight x 10 camera. So now I have all my notes here. All I need to do is bring a calculator. If you don't want to bring the big bulky graphing calculator, you can bring your phone. You should have enough power to do anything that you want. So hopefully that was a, a shorter version. It's probably half as, the video is probably half as long as uh, the other video. But I will link that video up here. Please go watch it for a more in-depth view. Um, but this is exactly how I set up my field notebooks and uh, gives you an idea of how you can do this yourself and how you can actually practically use that in the field. So I hope you, uh, if you like these shorter form videos, uh, let me know. Uh, I try to give the most detailed information, use the whiteboard, do a lot of things on the, uh, you know, just make sure that 
I go into full detail. That was going to bother me if that was still on there. So, but if you like these shorter form videos where I kind of go through quickly, uh, give you some more examples, show you how I set things up, uh, please let me know in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Um, like this video if you like it. And again, down below, comments. I try to read all the comments and respond to the, the comments. So there we go. We got our field notes. We got our meter. We got our calculator. We're good to go.